Actually, I started uh, at the beginning uh, with just trying to express myself. It uh, mainly freedom of expression was very important to me. At, and then, in, I think in 2006, I started blogging about homosexuality in, in Syria. Uh, during the demonstrations in Syria, uh, the, fir uh, the very first months of the revolution, I uh, started also blogging, but used a different name, uh, about uh, the political situation for LGBT persons. Like, for me as a gay person in Syria, how, how does this political situation affect me and why I'm anti-regime? Uh, and uh, then later I started uh, an um, LGBT magazine online, Mawaleh. When it's about LGBT rights, it's something about helping people to express themselves. Uh, maybe like, you know, I've, I thought of Mawala at the beginning as a platform for this as well. Mr. Gay Syria, the film, is, uh, is actually about a group of Syrians uh, trying to uh, uh, to find their way to uh, to make a media buzz about uh, uh, the uh, the Syrian LGBT issue, uh, the idea was to go to Mr. Gay World and maybe like you know create some media attention uh, and present a different image of uh, the LGBT refugees because everything we hear now is about the people who got killed and nobody actually pays attention to people who survived and trying to actually to build their lives. I think the film would be interesting for German audience because of uh, uh, the German story. Uh, I am a character in the film and I live in Berlin. <laughs> I, uh, uh, the film follows some of my story here, the struggles some people have, although I'm a little bit more privileged compared to others, but uh, still, it shows uh, the struggle to settle, to find a place, uh, uh, the challenges that we have with uh, this anti-refugee sentiment somehow that is uh, like now big in, uh, in Europe. Uh, I hope that it also uh, maybe answers uh, the question of why people want, why do people want to leave to Europe or to maybe North America somehow, uh, especially with the current situation, political situation in Turkey and uh, the homophobic uh, campaign somehow by the Turkish government. So I think it's uh, interesting for this because. You have the part of the film in Turkey, part of the film in Germany, it's about Syrians. And uh, Germany has the biggest number of Syrian refugees in Europe now. So I think it might be interesting for, for this reason. I'm working now with Schwulen uh, Berlin with uh, uh, LGBT uh, refugee project. We call it the Queer Refugees Project, and um, oh, we are dealing with uh, with a lot of uh, stories from uh, LGBT refugees, um, LGBT asylum seekers, actually in in Berlin, and and in all Germany as well, because we receive lots of emails and questions. Uh, I would say that. Uh, for Syrians, it's a little bit easier than others because of the war in the country, so they cannot be sent back. And this is, uh, this is, um, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is an easy, like you know, an easy solution for for the current situation. At least, uh, like you, you know that at least even if they get uh, subsidiary protection, you can just work on the case later. But for other refugees, it's, it's becoming very difficult to, to claim asylum and to receive a status. Uh, there are countries that are considered safe countries, although they, are, they have like a very 
awful record of uh, human rights violations, but still people are being sent to those countries somehow. Um, people are being asked uh, questions uh, that are homophobic or transphobic somehow. And you can, when we read uh, the, <coughs> the transcription of uh, the interview, we, we see that there is some, some, uh, somehow, like, you know, the direction of the question is just to pressure the person into breaking down and not being able to provide anything more, who have actually valid threats against them and still being denied asylum. And uh, this is a big problem now. Uh, uh, unfortunately, there, there is no way of, uh, of working around this. Uh, you have a political situation now that is trying to please the voters with a big number in statistics of, being of, of people who were denied asylum and deported outside of Germany. And uh, this takes the chance of people who actually deserve uh, a chance to stay in Germany and have the right to asylum, of being den denied asylum, and this is quite a dilemma for us now. I do experience both homophobia and racism in, uh, in Germany. At, uh, my first experience was actually with some government officials here, and I had a very racist teacher. Uh, and it was very difficult for me to change the class because like, they made it uh, very difficult to change classes uh, during the integration course. So when I managed to leave that class, the second teacher was a homophobe who condoned homophobic remarks from uh, people in the class. Uh, there are times that you hear uh, that people might say things to you. Uh, and there are times that, uh, like, you know, the whole situation shows uh, some kind of hidden uh, racism uh, somehow. There is also the problem with racism within the LGBT community itself. The, uh, so you have, like, intersectional problems with uh, racism and homophobia. Uh, I remember when I was looking for a flat for a while, I uh, whenever I said, I mentioned that I'm uh, Syrian, I never uh, received a call or I never, uh, they never picked up again when I called. Like, you just tell you, okay, uh, let's talk again, and then they never pick up again. Uh, until actually very, very recently, I was quite angry with the situation. And uh, I think it's just like, you know, comes to a point where you just need to move on because you kind of eventually as a situation, it's, it's very overwhelming. So if, uh, if you cannot deal with it, it's either being angry or just focusing on something else. And yeah, I just decided like uh, I, I can just speak out about racism and homophobia somehow and see what, what happens. It's almost the story of my life. <laughs>